What's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. I want to continue to examine the 100 years of World Championship fights. December 9th, 1955. Ray Robinson would regain his middleweight championship belt for the second time, so he would be a three-time middleweight champion when he knocks out Carl Bobo Olsen. Carl Bobo Olsen would become the middleweight champion in 1953 when he would defeat Randy Turpin in an, on an elimination match. It's a tournament that Ray Robinson would create when he retired, 1952. And he would once again become middleweight champion of the world by knocking out Carl Bobo Olsen. Remarkable. Let's take a look at that fight between Carl Bobo Olsen and Sugar Ray Robinson. Is challenged by Sugar Ray Robinson, Chicago, 9th of December, 1955. This is the third meeting between Carl Bobo Olsen and Sugar Ray Robinson. Robinson in the white shorts. In the previous meeting, Robinson stopped Olsen and then outpointed him for the championship. Tonight, Olsen is the champion, and Robinson is making a comeback after three years out of the ring. Robinson retired in 1952 to become a nightclub dancer in Paris. The financial restrictions and considerations have brought him back into the ring tonight against Olsen to try and regain his title. Robinson's now 35 years old, and despite beating Olsen twice, Olsen is the favourite to retain his title tonight. Robinson using his left jab. Olsen likes to get inside, bully the challenger. He's a rough, tough fighter. Robinson's all clubs. And our referee breaking them up. Robinson using a long right hand there. You can see his footwork is classy. He's a real dancing master in the ring. Olsen can't hope to outbox Robinson. He's got to try and get in close. Rough his older opponents up. Robinson stopped Olsen in 12 rounds in their first fight. The first, first man to beat Olsen inside the distance. The second time, they had a close 15-rounder for the title, which Robinson won on points. Olsen tries a right hand there that misses. Again, Robinson moving nicely, using his left jab, tying Olsen up inside. He's working quite hard to break them up in this first round. And there's a famous Robinson left hook. He catches Olsen as he comes in. Olsen's trying to slip that jab. Good right hand for Robinson. And a right up again to the body. He's the faster puncher of the two. But Olsen won't be denied. He's strong. He's got a good chin. And there's the bell to end the first round. It's round two of this World Middleweight Championship Contest. Sugar Ray Robinson in the white shorts. Jabbing neatly. And a great right hand from Robinson. Keeping Olsen at bay with that jab. Olsen's pressing forward. And the ref 
Osprey breaks them again. Nelson tries a sweeping right hand and misses. You can already see that Ray Roberts is going to knock out Corbo Bolson. Roberts is tying him up constantly inside, not letting Olsen work. Olsen constantly presses inside. Robinson is working with him. The reason why I say he's going to knock him out is because Olsen falls for the feints. That was his problem was with Ray Robinson. Robinson set him up every time. If you notice, Robinson feints with his left every time. Olsen can't see the punch coming. Beautiful jab. Look at the head movement by Robinson. He wants to lure. Correct. He wants to lure Bobo Olsen to his left side. Beautiful. Got him. Fell for it. A oh, great job. Fight's over. Bobo Olsen's a great fighter, but Ray Robinson's too much. Beautiful feint. That's what got him. He feinted with his left hand a couple of times. He saw that he fell for the feints. Set him up with a hook off the jab. Beautiful job, Ray Robinson. Rematch. Less than six months on from his previous victory. Los Angeles, 18th of May, 1956. Now let's watch this fourth and final fight with Robinson and Cobble Bolson. Six months, six months in between the third fight and this fourth fight here. Beautiful. I see something that Robinson is doing right now. Good jab. If you notice, he stays on Paul Bobo Olsen's right side. Completely on his right side. Watch as he turns. Notice when Bobo Olsen rabbit punches Ray, he rabbit punches him right back. Nice hook off. Nice hook off the right hand jab of Carl Bobo Olsen. Beautiful left hook by Ray Robinson. That's important punch to throw. Look how Ray ties up Bobo Olsen on the inside. Look at the feints he's falling for. Look at the feints. Beautiful hook off the jab. Beautiful. Mushy Callahan's the referee. I met him. Very nice uh, person he was to talk to. He was a movie director for boxing in Hollywood. Oh, beautiful hook off. Wonderful hook right under the heart. By Ray Robinson. Oh my God, beautiful combinations. Look at the feints he's falling for. Cobble but awesome. Now what Robinson seems to be waiting for is Olsen to lean to his right side. That's what he's, that's what Robinson's waiting for. Oh, beautiful. 
He's jabbing Gobo Olsen to the right, to the left side of Olsen's face. So Olsen can lean over to the side of Ray Robinson's hook. And he's going to hook off the jab. What a brilliant mind Ray Robinson has. Amazing. All the fighters from Ray Robinson forward had learned their craft from Robinson. You can see it. You can watch Ray Robinson and you can see a lot of these guys from Robinson's time on doing some things that he's doing. That's what they've been taught. They're probably not aware they learned that from their trainer through Robinson. But Ray Robinson, that's where they got a lot of that stuff from. It's a brilliant fighter. What's this hook? Oh my god. My goodness. He fell for the hook again. So what Robinson does, he jabs to the right, the left side of the opponent's face, in this case Olsen. When he leans over to the left side of Robinson, watch what happens here. Beautiful hook. Oh my god. A monster of a fighter, Ray Robinson. Beautiful job. See, Carl Bobo, Olsen, Carl Bobo Olsen was from Hawaii. He was a very, very good fighter. He just had problems with Ray Robinson. He really had problems with boxers. Here you have Carl Bobo Olsen, Ray Robinson, Stanley Ketchell, Harry Grab, and Mickey Walker. One of the collections of books that I have, the Veterans Boxing Book. I have almost every one of those in my collection. Carl Bobo Olsen, to your right. And the great Sugar Ray Robinson, to your left. Robinson is once again the middleweight champion of the world. But I go back to June 10th, 1955, World Welterweight Champion. The Boston Tony DeMarco was knocked out by Carmen Basilio. 12 rounds in Syracuse at the War Memorial Auditorium. To win the crown, the referee was Harry Kessler. He stopped the contest one minute and 52 seconds of the 12th round. September 14th, Tony DeMarco would face Chico Bijar of Boston. He would score a first round technical knockout. November 30th, 1955. A rematch would be in order. With the new World Welterweight Champion, Tony DeMarco. Patty was a really, really good fighter. He'd be in the ring with Carmen Basilio. Now, Basilio would have three fights with Johnny Saxton, two fights with Tony DeMarco, two fights with Ray Robinson. We'd have a 10 round draw with Jimmy Carter. After facing Kit Gavilan, Wallace Bud Smith, Casper Ortega three times, Vince Martinez, and Arthur Persley. Tony DeMarco would get one more shot at the crown when he would face Virgil Aikens 
October 29th, 1957. Then again, January 21st, 1958. Tony DeMarco of Boston. I showed you in a video back. He would face Johnny Saxton of Newark, New Jersey. And he would take the crown away from Johnny Saxton. By knockout. But he couldn't deal with Carmen Basilio. Because Carmen Basilio fought like him. The only difference is Carmen Basilio was a more technical street fighter. Very good fighter was Carmen Basilio. Let's take a look at Carmen Basilio and Tony DeMarco. June 10th, 1955. We fight him once again. Carmen Basilio finally wearing down DeMarco and registering a 12th round TKO that uh, brought this return match into such an exciting state. And this Boston Garden is practically jammed with people who are here anticipating a return bout every bit as thrilling as the one they put on in Syracuse. So things are just about ready to go. So now let's switch you up into the center of the ring and to the ring announcer, Fred Russo. Gentlemen, may I present former lightweight, welterweight champion of the world, Tony Canzoneri. One of the country's outstanding featherweight from Holyoke, Bobby Goucher. Also pleasing. Basilio can weather a rough punch. Exchange of right hand. Both landed, both hurt. That staggered him back for just a moment into the ropes. One minute to go in the fourth round. to go in the fourth round. Now it looks like a slight cut has been opened over the right eye of Carmen Basilio. A very slight cut. He sounded round number five coming up. This is Tony DeMarco in the black trunks. DeMarco landed some belts to the jaw of Carmen Basilio, which would have felled a lesser opponent. Basilio, an amazingly tough character, just shook them off, kept right on coming. Oh, 
follows a solid left hook. They'll jolt him back into the corner again. Let's see if Carmen can shake this one off. DeMarco hanging with a right hand. Tony DeMarco before his hometown fans here in Boston. Finding the range with the heavy artillery. a good left hook. Two minutes to go in the fifth round. And Tony DeMarco steals a look at the clock on the wall. Oh, my God. The right hand by DeMarco was taken by Basilio going away. The second right hand was much more solid. Scheduled 15 round fight for the Wellaway Championship of the World. Carmen Brasilio, the champion in the white trunks, against Tony DeMarco. seconds left in the fifth round. Now we're ready to go for the sixth round after a wild fifth round that saw Tony DeMarco stagger Carmen Basilio back into the corner with a tremendous left hook. And then Basilio, as the round wore on, fought the clouds out of his mind and came back with a good defensive manipulation and a good strong attack. Carmen Basilio gifted with an astounding toughness. And the left hook bangs into Carmen Basilio and another one. Celio is getting that right hand shot to the jaw of DeMarco in these last two rounds. Although not yet with a really big punch.
One minute to go in the 11th round. Oh, good hook. Basilio, after riding a heavy storm of weather in the 7th and 8th rounds, has gradually fought his way back to a sharp punching, good defensive fighter once again. Oh, yeah. Basilio's ready to go. Oh, I'm sorry. DeMarco's ready to go. Oh, he's gone. Can't defend himself. Oh, my God. That's actually a concussion punch. Yeah, he's gone. He doesn't know where he is. Shouldn't be allowed to come back out. He has a concussion. Oh, he's out. That's amazing. Two second difference. Then the first fight. Up in Syracuse. Yeah, he's concussed. They help him back to the corner. And we'll have the announcement on the official time in just a moment or two. But Tony DeMarco, after almost flooring Carmen Basilio in the seventh round, and seeing Carmen Basilio weather the biggest punches that DeMarco could throw, then come back and score a 12th round TKO. Here's the time. Attention. Attention, please. The referee stops the bout. The time, one minute, 54 seconds of the 12th round. The winner and still well away champion of the world, Carmen Basilio. Carmen Basilio. What a fight that was. Carmen Basilio, something else. So he's a rising star. I'm Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. All great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. Let's continue this 100 years of World Championship Fight Series, 1956-1957. Thanks for hanging in there with me.
Salud.